It's a project where, um, I don't know if this is going to work or not, you can go, no, of course you can't. Um, uh, you can go, if you go to this website, you'll see the standards displayed in a very convenient, flexible way that's helpful for exploring the manual fine sample tasks um, that we're putting up to illustrate the standards. But more importantly, you'll have the opportunity to join a community of people that writes and edits and vets these tasks. So I encourage you to go there, read about illustrative mathematics, if you're a teacher, this is a resource, but it's also a community that you can join. At the moment, it's not the complete um, vision that we have for two or three years down the road, but we already have um, about 150 people, many of them teachers, who are actively involved in helping us uh, look at tasks, edit tasks, vet them, and produce them. Um, that has about, uh, we have a wider community of about 8,000 registered users on the site, so. Um, I encourage you to go and take a look at that. I think uh, I, I'll stop there and, and open it up for questions, um, if anybody has any. Yes? I'm interested in the role of procedural fluency, <coughs> mm -hmm. because that's historically important, because that used to be the only way you could do stuff. Right. And now I got this. Right. <laughs> and, uh, that's a hotly debated topic, of course. And I guess I, I'll give you my answer. Um, I don't think we know yet to what extent you can learn conceptual understanding on a basis of, um, so I don't believe you can achieve conceptual understanding on a basis of zero procedural fluency. I mean, I think even like you probably think there are something kids should be able to do, right? in their heads. Um, and I think that there's a certain sort of um, uh, way in which uh, practice with procedures, if it's done in, an, in a way where you're paying attention to what you're doing and understanding what you're doing and sort of thinking about how it works, gives you a sort of feeling that, um, uh, that you can put to use uh, in a conceptual way later on. So I think, for example, uh, working with mental arithmetic or even paper and pencil algorithms for whole numbers, if it's done in a way where you're expecting conceptual understanding, where you're expecting students to know what they're doing and sort of how, how the number system works, I think it builds a sort of fluency that comes to good use later when, you, when, you're, when you're studying algebra. You can sort of see uh, that the reason a certain algebraic manipulation works is because, oh yeah, these things are actually numbers and I, you know, I know how numbers and operations work. So, uh, and by the way, I should say the standards are pretty clear that these procedural um, cap standards come after a lot of work with the operations. So, they, they, most of those um, uh, procedural uh, standards are culminating standards. They come at the end of a long period of work with conceptual understanding. Um, there was something else I was going to say, which I forgot. Um, so I'll move on to the next question. Uh, yes? What are the statisticians Um, I think what we thought, so here's what we came up with. There's not much data work in the elementary grades. There's some, it's not completely absent, but it's, it's decreased over what a lot of people are used to. And it's mostly in a supporting role for the number of operations work. In middle school, there is some statistics and probability. And then in high school, there's a whole category called statistics and probability. And I think our point of view, in fact, by the way, I mean, there's probably more statistics in the Common Core than there was in most standards beforehand, but it's just that it's not even distributed over the grade levels. It's mostly in high school, well, middle school and high school. I think we thought of it as, as, as an aspect of modeling. The fact that we're asking students to model with mathematics, to apply their mathematical knowledge to situations outside mathematics, statistics is an example of that. That is to say, it's a subject external to mathematics but which uses a lot of mathematics. So it seemed to us to fit very naturally 
with um, moving from a foundational knowledge of mathematics to a situation where students are starting to apply it to a situation in high school where you expect them to really actually have a fairly sophisticated strategic sense of how to use mathematics. So that's why we decided that high school was a natural place for the full-blown subject, middle school was a natural place for kids to be doing a lot of hands-on experimenting with data that would prepare them for applying mathematics to it. Um, I was glad to hear you say that because one of the, one of the things that drove me crazy when we were writing the standards was there was a, there was a significant um, group lobby, lobbying effort to keep all the statistics, you know, people didn't like the fact that we were removing um, a lot of that work from elementary. I mean, I mean, I'm, when I say it, like, they were really, really mad at us. But, um, well, some, some people were. On the other hand, people kept saying statistics is not mathematics. This would drive me crazy, and I'm, okay, you're telling me to write mathematics standards, and you're telling me to put statistics in, and you're also telling me statistics is not mathematics. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, I was wondering if you had, uh, based on your re research and experience with the Common Core, um, a recommendation for structure of high school math classes. <laughs> <laughs> Many people have wondered that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I used to make this joke that if you know if we uh, if we came down on one side or the other of that debate, I would have to go into the federal witness relocation program. <laughs> um, uh, I really think people should do what they feel like doing, or not know what they feel like doing, but like people should do what works for them. I think that is a that is a decision to be left up to states, school districts, whatever. The only thing I'll say is that it's a bit hard to fit the statistics and probability into the traditional course sequence, because like none of those courses is called statistics and probability. So uh, that problem is much easier to solve in the integrated curriculum. The other thing I'll say, just sort of um, by the way, is that a, another way to fit the statistics and probability into the traditional course sequence is to put it in the fourth year. And one of the things that I find a little bit crazy about all of this is that everybody who's working to fit the Common Core State Standards into high school courses is trying to fit them into three years for understandable reasons. The assessments will be in grade 11. But last time I counted, high school had four years. <laughs> and we didn't write, I think we probably wrote something like three and a half years worth of material. We left some flexibility at the end of what you're doing your fourth year. It makes a lot more sense to try and fit the high school standards into four than into three years, but nobody's doing it. So. Yes? So what, what sort of a sense do you have? What are textbook publishers doing? Crazy things. <laughs> <laughs> well, OK. No, it's a little bit unfair. Uh, textbook publishers are doing what you would expect them to do right now, which is they're, um, to a greater or lesser degree of, um, uh, of effort, um, trying to, you know, I mean, some textbook publishers, I feel like they just put a sticker on the front cover that says, aligned to the Common Core. I think there are others that are approaching this with more integrity than that, and really trying to look at what they've got and to see how it fits. Um, uh, I hope that the good ones, and I know some examples of this, are actually uh, removing things that are not in the Common Core and adding things that aren't and trying to sort of produce materials that, that are aligned. But we don't yet have any full-blown effort to, or at least no full-blown product, to, to produce a, um, a, new, a new set of textbooks. And to be honest, I don't think we will see that unless the consumers demand it. Um, you know, people love to hate textbook publishers. And, you know, I love to hate textbook publishers. I'm one of the people who loves to hate them. But the fact of the matter is they're just doing this, running a business, uh, which does depend on revenue from consumers, and they will sell people what they want. And as long as we keep wanting rubbish, <laughs> they will keep selling us. Rubbish. And so I think that a huge amount is going to depend, uh, if you want to realize the vision of the Common Core, is school districts, schools, states have to start doing something more sophisticated than these crazy alignment exercises where you put up two columns of stuff and check things off and say, yeah, that's aligned. I mean, if that's your definition of how to look at a textbook to see if it's aligned, then that's what you'll get, is stuff that, you know, 
is just the result of a checklist mentality. Whereas